poor Lao Kun and his two sons being strangled by two giant snakes sent by the gods as punishment. The sculptor, Praxiteles, broke the long Greek tradition of portraying male subjects in the nude and the females clothed with his Aphrodite of Nidos, which became the first nude woman. More Roman copies were made of this Greek sculpture than any other. The idea of empire appealed to the Romans too, and in 214 BC, they took control of Greece. The Romans loved Greek culture. They copied Greek statues, paintings, and architecture. They even adopted the Greek gods, though they renamed them all. Zeus, meet Jupiter. Poseidon, meet Neptune. Aphrodite, meet Venus. The Romans, though, were much more interested in portraiture of real people. Instead of seeking the ideal, they sought for a true likeness of their subject. Eh, yeah, warts and all. Also, Romans used art as propaganda to promote a political agenda and glorify emperors and their exploits. Emperor Augustus had himself portrayed as a strong young military leader in his warrior's breastplate, even though he was eh, much older at the time. Kind of like some people's Facebook picture. Trajan's column is like movie scenario in stone, the sculpted scenes depicting Roman battles and their ultimate victory. Roman architects became masters of the arch and the dome. The arch was a huge innovation for the creation of bridges and aqueducts. And the dome became the staple of big official buildings, like the Pantheon, which became one of the most influential buildings in Western architecture. The expansion of the Roman Empire spread Greek and Roman ideas throughout Europe, which formed the foundation of Western culture. Even today, we are still influenced by ideas developed in ancient Greece and Rome.